Hey everyone, how's it going? So I want to take this really short video just to show you a tool in text processing or a metric in text processing called TFIDF. And it'll big string of letters, right? But uh, what it's doing is really simply answering the question about if I have a collection of documents, which is officially called a corpus. So a corpus is a bunch of different documents, usually kind of relating to the same subject area. Then I want to get a measure, some kind of number that tells me how important is a given term or word for any of the documents that are in my corpus. So just to have a real example here, let's say we're looking at three inauguration speeches from recent precedents. So let's say we have the inauguration speech from President Clinton, we have it from President Bush, and we have it from President Obama. And the question again that we want to answer is for any given term that appears in one of these documents. So each one of these is called a document little d and the name for the entire corpus is this large d. Okay, so we want to know for any given term that might appear in any of these documents, we want to get a measure, some kind of number that says how important is that term for, let's say, the Clinton inauguration speech relative to the entire corpus. So this is going to be helpful for us in doing some kind of text processing, speech processing to say that, oh, Clinton really likes to use these words. These words are very crucial to that inauguration speech relative to the other inauguration speeches, or Obama really likes to use this word, or maybe here's a word that's not important to any speech in particular. We want to get some kind of measure of that. So literally, TF-IDF is a multiplication of two metrics. The first one called TF, which is term frequency, the other called IDF, which is inverse document frequency. So let's kind of build the story from the ground up. Let's first say that we're looking at term frequency alone, see what that gives us, and see what that does not give us. Term frequency could not be simpler. I will say there's other ways to compute it, but the general idea is that the term frequency of a given term, and you can think of these as words, for example, a term frequency of a given word in any of these documents is simply the number of occurrences of that term in the document divided by the number of terms in the document overall. So for example, let's say we're looking at the Obama speech and we look for the term healthcare. So let's say that we have 10 occurrences of the word healthcare in the speech, just for example, and let's say the number of words in the speech overall is 1000. So if we divide 10 over 1000, we're going to get 1%. So 0 0.01 is the term frequency of the word healthcare in the Obama speech. Now it might be different in the other two speeches and we might have different term frequencies for different terms. So this is a pretty intuitive measure about how often does a word occur in any given document? Now, why is this not sufficient to use alone in solving our original problem? The reason is that certain words are just going to occur a lot in all of the documents. For example, think of words like the or a or and or any kind of just casual word that doesn't really have any specific meaning but is just used in grammar. Those are going to have very big term frequencies no matter which document we look at. So looking only at the terms that have the biggest term frequencies is not going to give us this idea about which are the special words in each of these inauguration speeches? Which of them are unique to each of the inauguration speeches? And that's where inverse document frequency comes in. So the inverse document frequency is a function of two things. The first one is a given term, and the other one is large D, which again is the entire corpus. And the formula, or A formula, you, there's many different variations on this, but they're all kind of telling the same story, which is that here we have a log of large n, which is the number of documents in our corpus. For us, that's just three, divided by the number of documents with t, or that contain the term t. Now here's the story that this equation is telling. Let's look at the word the again. It's pretty obvious that the word the is going to appear in all of these documents. So our denominator here, the number of documents with the word the would be three. So if we have 3 divided by 3, that's log of 1, which is going to be 0. And that's how IDF helps. It basically says that words that are really common to all documents are not helpful for us in kind of telling these documents apart. Therefore, we're going to give them an IDF of 0. Now compare that with the word healthcare. Let's just say that the word healthcare, for example, does appear in the Obama speech, but does not occur in either of the other speeches. What would the IDF be of healthcare now? The IDF would be log of 3 which is the number of documents divided by one, which is the number of documents that contain the word healthcare. So we have a bigger number for IDF, and that bigger number signals to us that, hey, the word healthcare occurs in only a few of these documents, therefore I'm gonna give them a bigger weight because it could be more helpful in helping you distinguish what is different about these documents. And now all we do is we take this term frequency 
we take this inverse document frequency and we put them together and we get tf idf which is a function of a term a given document and the entire corpus so t little d big d and it's simply equal to the term frequency times the inverse document frequency and to close this video let's just look at two examples to see how this works all together let's say we're doing tf idf of the word a so just the casual grammar word a for any of our documents d and the last argument is of course the entire corpus now we're going to have a big term frequency no matter which document we put in so a large term frequency but it doesn't matter because as we already noted the inverse document frequency is going to be zero so for all of our documents the tf idf measure of the word a or the or and is going to be zero so they are not important at all even if they show up a lot in helping us distinguish between the documents now let's go back to the word healthcare and see what happens so if we do tf idf of the word healthcare and let's put in d3 which is the obama speech and then we put in the entire corpus here again we said that one percent of the words in the obama inauguration speech for example were the word healthcare so that's 0.01 times the log three we already talked about and i didn't compute this but it's going to be some kind of positive number right and that's important because it says that the word healthcare is a positive number is potentially more helpful in helping us distinguish between these speeches now let's just do a quick theoretical example that i just thought of let's say that the word healthcare also occurs in the clinton speech okay but does not occur in the bush speech now what happens how does the story, uh, story change by a little bit we still have that it's going to be 0.01 because that's the percentage of the words in the obama speech that are healthcare but now our idf has changed a bit it's not log three it's log three divided by two because now there's two documents in the corpus that have the word healthcare so it's log 1.5 and log 1.5 is smaller than log three therefore the tf idf of healthcare for obama's speech goes down and this is good this is what we would expect because this tells the story that now healthcare seems like less of a good word in helping us distinguish the speeches because it's not unique to the obama speech anymore actually there's another document in the corpus that has it and as the corpus gets bigger and as a bigger fraction of the documents that have the word healthcare the less important it actually becomes so again in a nutshell tfidf is a combination of two measures the first one is a measure of how often does a term occur in a document and the other is a measure of how rare is that word across all documents so just something you might use for your text related data science projects if you have any questions please leave them in the comments below. Please like and subscribe for more videos just like this, and I will see you next time.